It's a living, breathing thing. The Assumption Parish sinkhole, more than 200 days after it mysteriously began swallowing up the swamp, hundreds of residents are still under a mandatory evacuation order. As Katie Moore reports, the cavern that caused it is still collapsing, leaving Bayou Corn residents wondering if there will ever be an end in sight. Bayou Corn has always been a peaceful place. We could drop the boat right there and just take off to go fishing. It was just like a paradise. But now it feels downright empty. Jamie Weber is gone. A sign on her old home says it's thanks to Texas Brine. She had no idea that she was putting her mobile home on land on top of an underground salt dome, one full of caverns used to make brine or salt water, others used to store hazardous, potentially explosive gases. Geophysicists now say the western side of one of the brine caverns is collapsing, filling in from deep in the earth, causing the sinkhole at the surface to expand and contract. On October 25th, <clears throat> we moved out of our home. She and some of the 350 evacuated Bayou Corn residents packed a joint legislative hearing in Baton Rouge in recent days looking for answers. Many of the ones they keep getting are conflicting and confusing, especially from the state and the company that once mined the collapsing salt cavern, Texas Brine. Senator, the cause of the sinkhole is the subject of pending litigation. At this point, I don't think it's proper to have any discussion about what the cause is and whether we accept what anyone has said regarding the cause of the sinkhole. The cavern collapse led to the sinkhole and created a path for the natural gas and the crude oil to come to the surface. That's Louisiana Department of Natural Resources Secretary Stephen Schutz. He slipped out a back door after the hearing without giving us the chance to ask him any questions. The sinkhole is constantly changing. It changes every time we go out there. Not Gary Hecox is an engineer consulting with DNR about what to do about the sinkhole. It's uncharted territory. The cavern was 3,400 feet deep, which is deeper than any known cavern failure impacting the surface in the international record. Meaning nowhere in the world has a brine cavern this large collapsed, and it's not finished yet. We still have 450 feet to fill. How long is it going to take to fill this up? At, at one foot per day, we're looking at an ongoing event that's still going to run over a year. Every time it shifts, recently installed seismic monitors pick up tremors like little earthquakes. When it does, big bubbles of natural gas, vegetation, and crude oil are released to the surface. They call it a burp. It appears that the sand and gravel that's in the bottom of the sinkhole breaks up a large gas bubble into many small bubbles, just like an aquarium, and that is a good thing because if you get a single bubble up and have an ignition source, you can have a flashover. An explosion. Instead, those little bubbles are coming out all around the actual sinkhole site, with 20 new sites spotted in the last month. Nine months after the bubble sites first surfaced, Texas Brine started installing vent wells to alleviate the pressure underground. You can see some of them burning in 15 places around Bayou Corn. We continue to install relief wells as fast as we can and we'll keep doing so as long as they continue to be effective. The problems in Bayou Corn aren't just ones you can see, but what you can't see. Take these guide wires, for example. During a recent rain, bubbles started coming up from around them. That's when residents knew the problems weren't just far off in the bayou. A house acts like a tent, and so if it's migrating up through the soil and it's being caught in the house, it's building up concentrations in the house. And then if it reaches explosive level, then one little spark in the house would set it off. Twice. Nick Romero now has five DEQ monitors installed in his house to measure natural gas and other chemicals. We have had our grandkids and now we can't. I love the fish and now I don't want to. They're struggling not just with the instability underground, but in their lives. Romero and some others haven't evacuated, but Weber did in October. Once they told us that they wanted to put monitors in our house, and that we'd have to live like, to me, like lab rats. Uh, there was no way for my kids to grow. And Weber says they feel forgotten, especially by Governor Bobby Jindal, who has yet to visit the sinkhole site or talk about it. He's promoting plants around the area, chemical plants, and he was in the area and he wouldn't, still, still to this day, does not acknowledge it.
In October and November, Jindal announced two chemical plant expansions a few miles from Bayou Corn, one in Geismer and one in Donaldsonville. But in six months, no visit to the sinkhole site. Where is he? Where is Jindal? You know, he's all over the United States, but he can't come uh, 40 minutes south of Baton Rouge and visit. As these Environmental Action Network photos show, when the sinkhole first appeared, it was just 400 feet in diameter. So far, it's swallowed nine acres. Scientists say the worst case scenario is it could swallow 40 acres. Even if it does, many, like Weber, are now just hoping Texas Brine will buy them out so they can move on. Katie Moore, Eyewitness News. Governor Jindal's press secretary released this statement in response to the question, why hasn't the governor visited Bayou Corn? He said, quote, we receive regular updates on the situation. Through my orders, agencies have deployed an abundance of resources to the sinkhole area. We ordered GOSEP, Louisiana State Police, DNR, DEQ, and DOTD to Bayou Corn to provide constant oversight, work with parish officials to resolve the situation, and hold Texas Brine accountable for the problems caused by its failed capital. Thank